Welcome to our Cabinet Vision tutorial on drawing walls. Today I will be using several levels of Cabinet Vision to show you all of the tools. However, I will be highlighting particular methods that must be used in specific levels as I go. Once you enter a new job or room, the first active option on the sidebar is walls. You are not able to complete any other drawing actions in a room until you have at least one wall drawn. When you select the Walls option, the sidebar and ribbon bar options will change and your cursor will now be active to begin drawing walls. Before you even begin to draw them, you must consider your layout as a whole and determine where the starting point will be. Walls must always be drawn in a clockwise direction. Here is an example. If you are wanting to draw a U-shaped room to create 90 degree corners inside the room, you must start here in order to ensure the face of the walls are facing towards the inside of the room. If you started at the opposite end of the layout and drew the walls anti-clockwise, you are not technically creating 90 degree corners, you are actually creating 270 degree corners because that's the angle at the face of the walls. Dimensions can be indicative to help you realise if you have drawn your walls in the correct direction, as they will always default on the back of a wall. Now let's look at using the drawing tools to demonstrate how to actually draw walls. The options available in the drawing tools vary depending on the level of software you are using. Here are the steps if you are using the line drawing tool. A single left click of your mouse, do not hold the button down, will start the wall. Using the mouse, drag the cursor in the direction you want the wall to run. Another single left click of your mouse to end the wall. Repeat these steps for as many walls as you like. To accurately create corners of subsequent walls, the starting point of those walls should begin at the same point as the end point on the previous wall to create a mitre join. To exit the drawing mode, a single right click of your mouse will open a menu for you to choose Select and your cursor will revert back to Standard. This is a shortcut instead of going to the ribbon bar at the top of the screen to choose Select from the Inquiry tools. Once your walls are drawn and you have reverted your cursor back to the Standard Select option, you can simply use a single left click of your mouse to select an individual wall to modify its length or any other properties of that wall via the options in the sidebar. Whichever field is highlighted means it is the active field and you can start typing in the correct length without having to click the field first. Hit enter on your keyboard to apply any new sizes that you type. Alternatively, you can enter the lengths of your walls as you are drawing them. Left click to start the wall, drag the cursor in the direction you want the wall to run and then without adjusting the direction of your mouse, you can start typing in the exact length of the wall. Once the length has been applied, hit enter on your keyboard to complete the wall. Now here are the steps if you are using the chained line drawing tool. A single left click of your mouse to start the wall, drag the cursor in the direction you want the wall to run and another single left click of your mouse to end the wall. But this time you will notice you do not have to left click again to start the next wall. It is automatically continuing because you are using the chained line drawing tool. This means you do not have to manually create the corner joins and essentially what you are doing is only left clicking once at every corner instead of twice. When you have finished the walls, to end the continuation and lose the automatic connection, you can use a single right click on your mouse. To exit the drawing mode completely, another single right click of your mouse will open the menu for you to choose select as previously shown. If you are entering the lengths of the walls as you are drawing them, then you won't even need to left click with your mouse at all, aside from the starting point. Left click at the start, use the mouse to drag the cursor in the direction you want the wall to run, without adjusting the direction of your mouse, type in the exact length of the wall which will default in the length field on the sidebar, hit enter on your keyboard to complete the wall. Using the mouse again, drag the cursor in the direction you want the next wall to run, type in the length and hit enter. Repeat this for all the walls and then right click to end the continuation and right click again to choose select. The line box drawing tool is used in the exact same way, however by using this tool you are effectively drawing four walls at once in a square enclosed room. When you are entering the sizes in the sidebar, you can use tab on your keyboard to move between the fields. Now here are the steps to take if you are using the arcs drawing tool for curved walls. This tool is available in all levels of cabinet vision except for solid essential. There can be three ways to draw an arc. The first is arc by radius. The first left click will start the radius. This would ultimately be the centre point of a circle if you could visualise it this way. 
Using the mouse, drag the cursor in the direction you want the radius to go, in other words, towards the starting point for the curved wall. Left click again to start the actual wall, or you could have typed the length of the radius and hit enter to start the wall. Now drag your cursor in the direction you want the curved wall to travel. Either type the exact angle of the radius and hit enter to complete the wall, or simply left click once you have reached the right position. Then right click with your mouse to exit drawing mode. The next way to draw a curved wall is by using three points arc. This option is very handy when you have three known points to snap to. This example is using reference lines which can be drawn when you are in the construction option from the layer selector on the ribbon bar. If you are using reference lines, it can also help to have your snap to points option turned on which is in the bottom right corner of your screen. Use a single left click of your mouse to start the arc. A second left click at your mouse at the second point of the arc, which in this example is the midpoint of the top reference line. Then a final left click of your mouse at the last or the end point of the arc and then a single right click of your mouse to choose select and exit drawing mode. Lastly, you can use the arc by chord tool for curved walls. Left click to start the wall and drag the cursor in the direction you want the wall to run. Tab through the options on the sidebar, type a value in the chord length field and hit enter on your keyboard to end the wall. You now need to type a dimension in the sidebar for the chord position and hit enter. Then the last dimension you have to type in the sidebar is for the chord to wall distance and hit enter again to complete the arc. As always, a right click of your mouse to choose select and exit the drawing mode. When you no longer want to be in the wall mode, to exit the wall mode completely and return to your plan, you must use the return button on the ribbon bar. Once any wall has been drawn, you can select the wall to view and modify its properties in the sidebar. There can be up to five wall types. Standard and peninsular walls are available in all levels of cabinet vision. Cathedral walls or walls vaulted left and right are available in all levels except solid essential. Standard is the default option and should be used for all solid walls. Peninsular walls have no thickness, they are invisible in 3D view and should be used for breakfast bars and islands. Cathedral walls should be used for raked ceilings where the highest point is not at a wall end. Vaulted left walls should be used for raked ceilings where the highest point is at the left end of the wall and vaulted right should be used for raked ceilings where the highest point is at the right end of the wall. Finally, I will demonstrate how to draw a wall layout that includes the use of a peninsula wall for a breakfast bar. The method you use will depend on the level of cabinet vision you have due to the features that may or may not be available to you. If you are using Solid Drafter, Solid Advanced or Solid Ultimate, here is the most efficient way of drawing a breakfast bar layout. Draw the standard walls like I am here. When it's time for the breakfast bar, change the wall type on the sidebar to a peninsula wall, then do one left click on the face of the wall it will be attached to. Use tab on your keyboard to access the clearance option in the sidebar and type the distance from left or right where you want the wall to start and hit enter to begin the peninsula wall. Drag the cursor in the direction you want the wall to run, type the length of the peninsula wall and hit enter again to end the wall. No dimensions are displayed for any wall that has been connected to the face of another wall as you are able to place objects such as bar back panels on the back of the wall. Also, once you return from drawing mode, if you select the wall, you will see in the properties on the sidebar that this wall now has a left and right clearance option. If, however, you are using Solid Essential or Solid Standard, these levels of Cabinet Vision Solid will not allow you to place objects on the backs of walls or connect walls to the face of other walls like I've just shown. This means when you need to draw a breakfast bar, you not only need to use a second peninsula wall to place the bar back panelling on, but you will need to think about your layout differently and use additional walls. Draw the standard walls like I am here. However, when you get to the wall that the breakfast bar will extend from, you need to make the length the same distance as the total of what the cabinet widths will be. Draw a peninsula wall extending from the end point of the standard wall to create the corner. And draw another peninsula wall that starts at the end point of the first peninsula wall and drag it in the opposite direction, but end this second peninsula wall longer than the first so it doesn't connect to anything. Draw an additional smaller wall running in the same direction as the standard wall. Modify the size of this small wall to be the distance of what your breakfast bar overhang will be and change it to be a standard wall type, as this will eventually give the illusion that the standard wall along the back is actually longer. 
Finally, modify the length of the second peninsula wall to be the same as the first peninsula wall so that they all line up. Now you have drawn your walls correctly, you have created an accurate corner join here to place a corner cabinet and you will also be able to place bar back panels on the back of the breakfast bar because you have drawn the second peninsula wall facing the opposite direction. That example concludes this tutorial on drawing walls. I hope you found it useful and now have the information you need to create any wall layout you require.